This is the parasternal long axis view with the depth initially further out so that you can check for any pericardial or pleural effusions. Then reduce the depth so that the heart occupies most of the imaging area. Adjusting your gain so that you have a nice black blood pool. You should have your mitral valve and aortic valve in view, the right ventricle at the top and the left atrium, left ventricle. Zooming in over the mitral valve, we're checking that it opens well and turning colour Doppler on to check for any regurgitation. Zoom in over the aortic valve now and again check that the valve leaflets are opening well. Put colour Doppler over the valve to check again for any signs of turbulence or regurgitation. This is the right ventricular inflow view, looking at the tricuspid valve. Again, colour Doppler over the valve to check for any significant regurgitation. You can use your continuous wave Doppler here to get a trace of any regurgitation that you find. Most patients will have a small amount of tricuspid regurgitation. Tilting up to get your pulmonary valve with colour Doppler over it to check for regurgitation. Using continuous wave Doppler here, you can check for the peak velocity through the valve. We're now moving up one rib space to focus on the aortic root and check for any signs of dilatation. Rotating the probe, we're now at the base of the heart in the short axis view, with the aortic valve in the centre of our picture. Zooming in over the valve, we can check again that the cusps open well and that there are three cusps. Colour Doppler to confirm the presence or absence of regurgitation or turbulence. You can get the tricuspid valve again from this view. It's always a good idea when examining the tricuspid valve to image it from multiple perspectives. Now at mitral valve level, again with colour Doppler over the valve, if there was regurgitation we would be able to see where along the valve this was arising. We're now at papillary muscle level. This is a great view for checking for regional wall motion abnormalities. Moving one rib space down, we're able to get the apical short axis view. For the apical four chamber view, we want to make sure all four chambers are in view and that the left ventricular outflow tract is not coming into view throughout the cardiac cycle.
putting colour Doppler over the mitral valve, we can check for regurgitation. Continuous wave Doppler allows us to get a trace of any regurgitation that there is. To obtain your mitral valve inflow, you place your pulse wave Doppler at the tips of the mitral valve. Tissue Doppler, move over to the septal hinge point and place your pulse wave gate just above it. Make sure you optimise your scale to fit all of the waveform in. Your lateral TDI, do exactly the same but on the other side. Now reduced our depth so that we get a focused view on the left ventricle. You may need to ask your patient to breathe in and exhale all the way out to optimise this view. Moving slightly laterally around the chest, we can get a right ventricular focused view. And from here, we can get TAPSI using M mode. And using our tissue Doppler again, obtain a trace here so that we can get S prime. Colour Doppler again over the tricuspid valve. Now we have a five chamber view, focusing on the left ventricular outflow tract and aortic valve. Colour again confirms that this patient does not have aortic regurgitation or any signs of stenosis. Using continuous wave Doppler, we can confirm that she does not have elevated aortic velocities. With pulse wave Doppler just before the valve, it allows us to compare velocities right before and through the aortic valve. Bring our baseline up and make sure the scale is adjusted so that all of the waveform fits within the area. Rotating your hand you can get a two chamber view with the left ventricle and left atrium. You should put colour Doppler over the valve in this view as well. Further rotation, we can obtain the three chamber view. This is a subcostal view. You can ask your patient to take a big breath in and hold it. This often improves your image. By placing colour Doppler over the interatrial septum, we can check for any shunts. 
This is the inferior vena cava, where we check for inspiratory collapse. Aortic arch view now, and with colour Doppler we can see blood flow through the aorta. Using continuous wave Doppler, we can look for the peak velocity and also check for any continuous flow throughout the cardiac cycle. 